Intensive care medicine, or critical care medicine, is a branch of medicine concerned with the diagnosis and management of life-threatening conditions that may require sophisticated life support and intensive monitoring. Topic overview Patients requiring intensive care may require support for cardiovascular instability hypertension, hypotension, potentially lethal cardiac arrhythmias, airway or respiratory compromise such as ventilator support, acute renal failure, or the cumulative effects of multiple organ failure, more commonly referred to now as multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. They may also be admitted for intensive, invasive monitoring, such as the crucial hours after major surgery when deemed too unstable to transfer to a less intensively monitored unit. Medical studies suggest a relation between ICU volume and quality of care for mechanically ventilated patients. After adjustment for severity of illness, demographic variables, and characteristics of the ICUs including staffing by intensivists, higher ICU volume was significantly associated with lower ICU and hospital mortality rates. For example, adjusted ICU mortality for a patient at average predicted risk for ICU death was 21.2% in hospitals with 87 to 150 mechanically ventilated patients annually, and 14.5% in hospitals with 401 to 617 mechanically ventilated patients annually. Hospitals with intermediate numbers of patients had outcomes between these extremes. ICU delirium, formally and inaccurately referred to as ICU psychosis, is a syndrome common in intensive care and cardiac units where patients who are in unfamiliar, monotonous surroundings develop symptoms of delirium Maxman and Ward, 1995. This may include interpreting machine noises as human voices, seeing walls quiver, or hallucinating that someone is tapping them on the shoulder. There exists systematic reviews in which interventions of sleep promotion related outcomes in the ICU have proven impactful in the overall health of patients in the ICU. In general, it is the most expensive, technologically advanced, and resource intensive area of medical care. In the United States, estimates of the 2000 expenditure for critical care medicine ranged from $15-55 billion. During that year, critical care medicine accounted for 0.56% of GDP, 4.2% of national health expenditure and about 13% of hospital costs. In 2011, hospital stays with ICU services accounted for just over one quarter of all discharges .9 but nearly one half of aggregate total hospital charges .5 in the United States. The mean hospital charge was 2.5 times higher for discharges with ICU services than for those without. Topic: Organ systems. Intensive care usually takes a system by system approach to treatment. As such, the nine key systems are each considered on an observation intervention impression basis to produce a daily plan. In addition to the key systems, intensive care treatment raises other issues including psychological health, pressure points, mobilization and physiotherapy, and secondary infections. In alphabetical order, the nine key systems considered in the intensive care setting are, cardiovascular system, central nervous system, endocrine system, gastrointestinal tract and nutritional condition, hematology, integumentary system, microbiology including sepsis status, renal and metabolic, and respiratory system. Intensive care is usually provided in a specialized unit of a hospital called the Intensive Care Unit or Critical Care Unit 
Many hospitals also have designated intensive care areas for certain specialities of medicine, such as the Coronary Intensive Care Unit CCU or sometimes CICU for heart disease, Medical Intensive Care Unit MICU, Surgical Intensive Care Unit SICU, Pediatric Intensive Care Unit PICU, Neuroscience Critical Care Unit NCCU, Overnight Intensive Recovery OIR, Shock, Trauma Intensive Care Unit STICU, Neonatal Intensive Care Unit NICU, and other units as dictated by the needs and available resources of each hospital. The naming is not rigidly standardized. For a time in the early 1960s, it was not clear that specialized intensive care units were needed, so intensive care resources were brought to the room of the patient that needed the additional monitoring, care, and resources. It became rapidly evident, however, that a fixed location where intensive care resources and dedicated personnel were available provided better care than ad hoc provision of intensive care services spread throughout a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Equipment and systems Common equipment in an intensive care unit includes mechanical ventilation to assist breathing through an endotracheal tube or a tracheotomy, hemofiltration equipment for acute renal failure, monitoring equipment, intravenous lines for drug infusions fluids or total parenteral nutrition, nasogastric tubes, suction pumps, drains and catheters, and a wide array of drugs including inotropes, sedatives, broad-spectrum antibiotics and analgesics. Topic: Medical Specialties. Critical care medicine is an increasingly important medical specialty. Physicians with training in critical care medicine are referred to as intensivists. In the United States, the specialty requires additional fellowship training for physicians having completed their primary residency training in internal medicine, pediatrics, anesthesiology, surgery or emergency medicine. U.S. board certification in critical care medicine is available through all five specialty boards. Intensivists with a primary training in internal medicine sometimes pursue combined fellowship training in another subspecialty such as pulmonary medicine, cardiology, infectious disease, or nephrology. The American Society of Critical Care Medicine is a well-established multi-professional society for practitioners working in the ICU including nurses, respiratory therapists, and physicians. Most medical research has demonstrated that ICU care provided by intensivists produces better outcomes and more cost-effective care. This has led the LeapFrog Group to make a primary recommendation that all ICU patients be managed or co-managed by a dedicated intensivist who is exclusively responsible for patients in one ICU. However, in the U.S., there is a critical shortage of intensivists and most hospitals lack this critical physician team member. Other members of the critical care team may also pursue additional training in critical care medicine. Respiratory therapists may pursue additional education and training leading to credentialing in adult critical care and neonatal and pediatric specialties. Nurses may pursue additional education and training in critical care medicine leading to certification as a CCRN by the American Association of Critical Care Nurses. Pharmacists help manage all aspects of drug therapy and may pursue additional credentialing in critical care medicine as BCCCP by the Board of Pharmaceutical Specialties. Paramedics are certified to levels of CCEMTP, PNCCTP, CCPC and or FPC depending upon their speciality e.g. air, ground, adult, pediatric and or neonatal medicine. 
Nutrition in the intensive care unit presents unique challenges and critical care nutrition is rapidly becoming a subspecialty for dietitians who can pursue additional training and achieve certification in enteral and parenteral nutrition through the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition Aspen. Pharmacists may pursue additional training in a postgraduate residency and become certified as critical care pharmacists. Patient management in intensive care differs significantly between countries. In countries such as Australia, New Zealand and Spain, where intensive care medicine is a well-established speciality, many larger ICUs are described as closed. In a closed unit the intensive care specialist takes on the senior role where the patient's primary physician now acts as a consultant. The advantage of this system is a more coordinated management of the patient based on a team who work exclusively in ICU. Other countries have open ICUs, where the primary physician chooses to admit and, in general, makes the management decisions. There is increasingly strong evidence that closed Intensive care units staffed by intensivists provide better outcomes for patients. In veterinary medicine, critical care medicine is recognized as a specialty and is closely allied with emergency medicine. Board certified veterinary critical care specialists are known as criticalists, and are generally employed in referral institutions or universities. History <inaudible> Florence Nightingale era The ICU's roots can be traced back to the monitoring unit of critical patients through nurse Florence Nightingale. The Crimean War began in 1853 when Britain, France, and the Ottoman Empire Turkey declared war on Russia. Because of the lack of critical care and the high rate of infection, there was a high mortality rate of hospitalized soldiers, reaching as high as 40% of the deaths recorded during the war. Upon Nightingale's arrival and practicing, the mortality rate fell to 2%. Nightingale contracted typhoid, and returned in 1856 from the war. A school of nursing dedicated to her was formed in 1859 in England. The school was recognized for its professional value and technical caliber, receiving prizes throughout the British government. The School of Nursing was established in St. Thomas Hospital, as a one-year course, and was given to doctors. It used theoretical and practical lessons, as opposed to purely academic lessons. Nightingale's work, and the school, paved the way for intensive care medicine. <laughs> Dandy era Walter Edward Dandy was born in Sedalia, Missouri. He received his B.A. in 1907 through the University of Missouri and his M.D. in 1910 through the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Dandy worked one year with Dr. Harvey Cushing the father of modern neurosurgery in the Hunterian Laboratory of Johns Hopkins before entering its boarding school and residence in the Johns Hopkins Hospital. He worked at Johns Hopkins University in 1914 and remained there until his death in 1946. One of the most important contributions he made for neurosurgery was the air method in ventriculography, in which the cerebrospinal fluid is substituted with air to help an image form on an X-ray of the ventricular space in the brain. This technique was extremely successful for identifying brain injuries. Dr. Dandy was also a pioneer in the advances in operations for illnesses of the brain affecting the glossopharyngeal nerve as well as Meniere's syndrome, and he published studies that show that high activity can cause sciatic pain. Dandy created the first ICU in the world, O3 Beds in Boston in 1926.
Topic: <laughs> Ibsen era. Bjorn A. A. G. E. Ibsen (1915–2007) graduated in 1940 from medical school at the University of Copenhagen and trained in anesthesiology from 1949 to 1950 at the Massachusetts General Hospital, Boston. He became involved in the 1952 poliomyelitis outbreak in Denmark, where 2,722 patients developed the illness in a six-month period, with 316 suffering respiratory or airway paralysis. Treatment had involved the use of the few negative pressure respirators available, but these devices, while helpful, were limited and did not protect against aspiration of secretions. Ibsen changed management directly, instituting protracted positive pressure ventilation by means of intubation into the trachea, and enlisting 200 medical students to manually pump oxygen and air into the patient's lungs. At this time Carl Gunnar Engström had developed one of the first positive pressure volume controlled ventilators, which eventually replaced the medical students. In this fashion, mortality declined from 90% to around 25%. Patients were managed in three special 35-bed areas, which aided charting and other management. In 1953, Ibsen set up what became the world's first medical, surgical ICU in a converted student-nurse classroom in Commune Hospitale the municipal hospital in Copenhagen, and provided one of the first accounts of the management of tetanus with muscle relaxants and controlled ventilation. In 1954 Ibsen was elected head of the Department of Anesthesiology at that institution. He jointly authored the first known account of ICU management principles in Nordisk medicine, the 18th of September 1958, Arbeidet par en anesthesiologisk observationsafdeling, the work in an anesthesiologic observation unit with Tone Dahl Kvittingen from Norway. He died in 2007. Topic: <laughs> Safar era. The first surgical ICU was established in Baltimore. In 1962, in the University of Pittsburgh, the first critical care residency was established in the United States. In 1970, the Society of Critical Care Medicine was formed. See also Mechanical ventilation Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation Telemetry Chronic critical illness Critical care nursing Notes <laughs> <laughs>